Hello YouTube! Okay, I've decided to do another video. I've been pretty slack on doing videos. And uh, the main reason is I'm just not really that motivated to do them. But in this case I'm going to do one about power supplies. And recently I had one of my printer power supplies, which is 24 volt, uh, about 700 watts break. And now the thermistors actually dried out on them and they broke. So technically I can replace those and fix them. Or fix it. And uh, I've been using that one for a couple of years or so now. So it's, you know, it cost me like 50 bucks. I got a replacement recently. And that cost me $65 just from some local joint, which imports them, I guess. I just wanted to do, get it sooner than four weeks. So... Um, so I got it locally, and uh, anyway, it's rated as 786 watts or something like that, or 96 watts. About the same anyway, the internal components are very much the same. However, it's pretty much dead on arrival. And uh, I'm just going to check to make sure it, you can see that fine, everything's fine. Okay, good. So I'm going to show what this power supply does. When you plug it in because this will also be a video I can show to the people I bought it off and say well this is what it does now as you can see I've got the case kind of off at the moment that was just uh, just to check a few things but it's set to 220 volts in there the switch um, so it's not set to 110 so we have 250 volts here in Australia which is G20 basically for devices and um, I've connected the power up the pretty much the same way as it was on this. Um, they're all connected right. I've even checked it through the uh, multimeter to make sure I haven't done any wiring mistake. And I don't know if you guys can see the little light there. But let's plug it in and see what happens anyway. So it's woof. Try not to electrocute myself. That would be rather embarrassing. And so I've got the power on, and there's my switch. This is not. This is where the uh, 24 volt comes from. And so what I'll also do is um, connect up my multimeter to these points here. Again, being careful not to touch anything over there. So we have positive up here somewhere. negative down here get that in there okay DC and so we just want to see if what sort of voltage flicks on here if any at all um, so I don't know if you guys can see that but um, anyway, let's let's flick the switch and see what happens. So there's definitely some activity happening in there, and you might have seen the uh, green light come on for a bit, but. Um, not much at all. Sometimes the fan will spin up as well. And um, so it's definitely for a moment there it can get 24 volts. But overall it just doesn't do much. And I'm thinking the um, converters, the 24 volt relay, what do you call them? The uh, I should have checked this online what they're called. I forgot what they're called. The things that are connected to the heatsink in there, the inverters, whatever they are, um, I think one of them is maybe busted, so I have to uh, desolder them and test them. So yeah, it's still on now, but nothing's happening. It's just not producing anywhere near the voltage it's meant to, and the fan is not even going. So if I turn them off, it'll go down a bit. So um, yeah, it's uh, I'm not sure what's going on there. 
It has got a trim pot for adjustments down there, but it's just set to way it was when I received it, and those trim pots have limited limited um, range. You know, they don't really adjust it that much, so I don't see how it could be um, anything related to that. But out of curiosity, let's see if I can find the right fit, which has gone walkabout. There it is. And uh, let's just adjust that trim pot and see if anything changes on this. So I'll turn it back on. You'll see it rise a bit. Probably shouldn't use a, uh, just in case it's a short, I probably shouldn't use straight now. <laughs> okay, so let's adjust that trim pot. See there's a... Uh, not much happening there. So it's definitely not a faulty, uh, probably not a faulty trim pot, you know, causing it to glitch out and produce much lower voltage than it's meant to, which I have seen happen. So that's going to the two extremes of the trim pot, and nothing's happening, so it's not really affecting it at all. So, so um, I'll open this up and show you what I believe could be the faulty parts. But I, can't, I don't know for sure. And first of all, I pull out the power so I don't electrocute myself. And uh, have a look. Of course, you don't want to touch, um, put your finger in there either because the capacitors could still hold quite a fair bit of charge. While it might not kill you, it will give you a good jolt. So this is the power supply. It looks reasonable you know and there's the thermistors right there so the thermistors are right those right there and that's what these are these broke inside this there the fuse is okay and um so we'll just take this heat sink out and what i believe could be happening is some of these um power relay converters, what do they do? They, they cycle the power to get the right voltage down, they step it down, and they cause a lot of heat, that's why it's got a heat sink on there. I forgot the name of them, I'm not that terrible. Anyway, I think it could be possibly one of these. Could be faulty. Um, because like I said, um, if uh, you turn it on sometimes and the fan will go. It will work. So, it does seem to sometimes generate that 24 volts around about, but then it just switches off. It just goes dead, as you saw in the multimeter. And um, so, you know, everything else looks pretty good. There's no short um, shorts going on. There's no um, bad solder connectors. So I've had a look on, on the bottom of the board. I, I'm not sure what this does. Um, but whatever that does, that could be another thing. That these things can break pretty easily. There's, well, there's not too much that can go wrong in this, really. If you've really got a these four here, this or that, um, so and there is a small control chip down here which has got nothing written on it, so I have no idea what that is. So I, I, I don't know. I don't think it's worth me fixing it at the moment. Um, the people I bought it off, where they're trying to give me fifteen dollars, I paid sixty-five dollars, and they said, "Well, how about you keep it, and we'll give you back fifteen dollars?" And I'm like thinking, "No, nah, wouldn't it be better if you sent me a working one instead?" So they ha I have managed to get them to um, sort that out at their end. They want me to close the uh, the complaint or the uh, refund option thing on eBay. But I told them, I said, look, how about you send me the replacement first and then I'll close it because it doesn't really hurt them in the meanwhile. Unless I um, get eBay or PayPal to get involved, then it can hurt them. But, uh, um, you know, you close it and then eBay gives you no recourse. They close it completely. You can't open up the complaint again. So they could just decide not to send it then. <laughs> so... Um, I probably will wait until that turns up. Anyway, uh, it, it looks very, very similar to this original one, which is, this is a faulty one, which I am waiting for some replacement parts to turn up so I can fix it. And there's the thermistor there, it just dried out and broke. And it's, uh, they're very similar. 
I'll just get rid of this. You can see, very similar. It's two massive capacitors. You know, it's this one is only meant to be rated at uh, 720. And um, so I'm thinking I might, in the meanwhile, pull out these thermistors and shove them in here. See, this is where they were originally in this one. That's right there. But they're uh, dried out and just... So I'm thinking if I just take these off and shove them over there and uh, I'll have at least a working power supply to use in the meanwhile and uh, a replacement will turn up for this and then hopefully that replacement will work and... Uh, yeah, that's uh, that seems to be the solution. But um, I don't know if anyone else has had any problems with these power supplies similar to this, where it sort of like sort of turns on a little bit. The green light comes on. Uh, it wasn't a very good example I showed you, but the green light comes on and even the fan spins a little bit, but then it just goes and powers down and kaput. Um, maybe someone out there knows exactly which component might be at fault. I'm thinking these up here, to be honest, but I could be wrong. Maybe these are these were connected to um, a big block aluminium here, so really they shouldn't overheat and shouldn't be defective. But uh, that could be a manufacturing defect in them. Who knows? So um, I have noticed on this one it has this heatsink on this component here, and uh, yeah, this one hasn't got that. So. Maybe something related to that. Maybe this is heating up and um, it, it, it detects it and, and just shuts it down. Not sure. I mean, that would be a lot of heat. So, yeah, I don't know. So anyway, um, what I'll do now is um, I will use my desolder tool All right here. I haven't used it much, but I'll be using this. And I'll take those semesters off and put them on this, and then we'll see what happens, see if this works. You know, at least I can fix the original one there and use that. I want to get a replacement, I'll pop it on the other printer. And so I'll, I'll skip the video there for a second, and then we'll come back. All right. Mick works. Connect, connect, connect. Right. So, what have I done? Well, I've put the thermistors from that one into this one, which is the original. And nothing else really looks that bad on the board at all. Looks pretty good. Connected up the heat sinks. I don't know why they've got a separate heat sink here. Maybe these ones. Uh, um, produce a bit more heat and uh, fans connected in I've got the multimeter on so we can see if it produces any voltage and let's see if just replacing those thermistors on this one solves the problem so make sure it's in the off position try not to electrocute myself when I'm plugging it in and we've got the wires or the neutral wire let's flick it on There we have it. It works. Look at that. So not a complete loss or thought. It's like paying um it's like paying sixty-five dollars for some thermistors. Um while I'm at it, I'm gonna adjust that voltage, see if this works. Let's try to get it closer to 24 volts. This is for a 3D printer and I don't want to overdo it. Yeah, 24.1. So no. here we go. So, um, ta -da! and there's a cut a fan I installed, but it, it really pushes a lot of air through there, so there's no problem at all with that. And that it actually has the same fan, but the original fan that was on this was one of those uh, really really loud ones, thick loud ones. It was like a vacuum cleaner. No. Anyway. Um, so that has fixed this original power supply for the printers, which I'll show in a tick. And um, yeah, that one there, going to be a more complicated fix. There's likely something I can do there, but I have to figure it out sometime. Um, hopefully they send me that other replacement unit and 
and uh, replacement power supply, and we can, um, yeah, we can uh, just use that, and that'll just be uh, sitting around until I get time to figure it out. If at all, it could be something really serious, so maybe it's just not worth trying to figure out. I don't know. Um, anyway, um, so this is 24 volts. I'm running, trying to run both my printers, large format printers, off 24 volts. And um, so I might as well show you the printers. And uh, they're not finished 100% yet. And I have have got recently um, an upgrade for them so I'm just going to take the camera out of this and uh, let's have a look so there's the Tronxy X5S which I had a problem with in the last video uh, turned out it was for the most part just some bad wiring it wasn't um, the wiring had to be a certain way and it just wasn't clear on, on exactly how to do that or something in the instructions I can't remember now I did change the extruder to a Volcano one uh, one of the uh, XCR brand ones which has got the dual thing in there but unfortunately the controller for the uh, Tronxy X5SA does not do dual but, re but recently um, I've also got these flex plates which I'll do a review on these are actually quite affordable, almost, well, about half the price of what you'd pay, maybe even a little bit less, um, for the, you know, wham-bam ones and that, because you have to factor in, like, they want, for two of them, they want, um, they want you to pay, like, $40 shipping on top, this is US, and then they, and then they want you to pay $150 each or something for them, it gets quite expensive when you've got two printers. So here's the other printer. Oh, cables getting in a tangle. And uh, this is my original Modus printer. And it works quite good. There is one drawback. It's a very heavy printhead one. And this is a flex plate. Again, I'm going to make a video uh, showing them a little bit more. But it's a Flexion extruder, so a very expensive upgrade. I don't think I needed to spend that. But it prints flexible material really nicely. Um, it's very heavy, very heavy um, print bed to move backwards and forwards, which is one of the reasons why I got the Tronxy there. So the only downside to my printers at the moment is obviously they had the power supply break. Both of them are running off. Uh, let me get the screen back up. There we go. Both of them are running off solid state relays. So this one's got a solid state relay there. And this one's got a solid state relay. Uh, I don't know if you can see it there. Um, both, you know, 40 amp solid state relays. Just running off DC 24 volts. And the heat bed on this one, even though it's quite thick, it takes only about four minutes to heat up. So it's really quite good. And this one is a little bit longer because it's actually running off a 20 volt power supply at the moment. But it doesn't take that long either. This is to get to 100 degrees. So that's cool. And uh, the magnetic surface stays magnetic at 100 degrees. And I don't think I need my print um, beds hotter than 100 degrees, really. And uh, so that's really cool. I print a lot of ABS stuff. That's uh, an actual ABS. And uh, so the only other upgrades I was going to do with this is uh, install linear rails sometime and maybe change the controller for what that hatch that can support the dual extrude with some TMC um, drivers so they're not so noisy so yeah uh, linear rail would definitely help this uh, because this does have a bit of a backlash a bit of play as you can see here when I'm moving it see and unfortunately when it's pulling on it backwards and forwards it may be only moving at like 50 microns or something the nozzle backwards and forwards but it reduces the quality of the print and this one's probably not quite as bad, but because it's so heavy, it sort of has a different problem. <laughs> it's the weight. And um, so I might put a linear rail on this eventually as well. So at the moment it has these caster wheels. And 
they're not they're not the best. They do have a tendency to bend the plastic, or they have a they flex up a bit after a while. Um, but that'll be a future project, and uh, yeah. So that's the two printers, and I've got my fantasy printer there, which I haven't used for a while. But that's a decent printer. It's uh, yeah, it should, it could do a twenty four volt on it as well. It takes forever for a heat bed to heat up. It only gets to like 90 degrees. I can't go above that. It's only 12 volts. And uh, then I've got my PO Poly, which I haven't used for quite some time because it's messy. And then I've got my, uh, what do you call this? Uh, this is a milkshake printer. And I haven't filled that up with the liquids and everything inside there, which are down there. Because that will be messy and I don't know if I want to spend... The time. So this is the Pia Poly. There's a flexible thing there. I haven't. I've got to clean that tray out. It's actually bent down a bit for some reason. But that's something I printed on the Flexion. Um, I probably have to heat that up and rebend it back to its square shape. But that's just a lid. And then I just take that off, and the smell of that uh, that uh, liquid there, that SLA liquid, uh, the resin. Yeah, it's, it's not fun. So that's why I haven't used the the resin printers that much uh, recently, and I, I've you know built printed out a few things utilities for them, but they're just smelly and uh, messy and yeah, I think I get a headache every time I use it as well. And uh, so these are the volcano um, nozzles. And uh, interesting thing is that this is actually, I, I couldn't figure out what would be the benefit of a Volcano nozzle, right? And so I got one anyway, thinking, well, this is going to be no different. But, in actual fact, for my purposes, a Volcano nozzle is the best. Because it has a, a very large bit of metal that allows the plastic to heat up for longer. So you can print... That's a 0.8 size nozzle. You can print bigger size nozzle easier and you don't have to ramp up the temperature really high. This one has got the standard nozzles and I'm running that at 270 degrees and it's still not hot enough for ABS on a 0.8 size nozzle to uh, really print at a decent speed. It's like printing at 30 millimeters a second, but you can tell that the plastic is only just getting molten enough. <laughs> So I think I'm going to have to upgrade these to uh, Volcano as well, just to get around that problem. Um, so, so yeah, that's an update on my printers, and it's ongoing, an ongoing thing. So now that I've got a working 24 volt power supply, which is the original I had, and a broken one sitting right there, which I got from eBay, hopefully that replacement turns up. Um, yeah. So I'm going to shove that on the printer and use it now, which is cool. So that is all from me. Thank you for watching in. And um, have any questions, post them below if you like the video. Like it. I'm going to fix up this audio. And um, I have a major problem with my camera at the moment where it's getting really bad audio. So yeah, I'm going to fix it up as best I can in post-processing. So let me know how that goes. <laughs> so thumbs up. Good on you. See you later.